Navigating in SketchUp is very easy. Most of the functionality is built into the input device, and this makes it very intuitive. You can orbit a model by holding down the mouse wheel and moving your mouse. This is called middle button drag. Let me show you how I set that up on my Mac. I'm using a tablet, and I can use a mouse or a pen on my tablet. For the mouse, I set the wheel to be a middle click. For my grip pen, I set this upper button to be a middle click. Either way, I just have to hold down either that wheel or the button and move the input device around and I'm instantly orbiting. Zooming is also very easy because it's controlled by the input device. If you're using a mouse, set the function of the wheel to scroll. If you're using a tablet, set the touch strip to function as auto scroll and zoom. The interface is different in Windows, of course, but you just need to set up your mouse control panel or tablet control panel to the same auto scroll or zoom. It's a good thing that orbit and zoom are built into the input device because that's all you really need to get around. Notice that the position of the mouse cursor determines where I zoom. If I zoom out again and move the cursor over here, when I zoom in, I'm going to be zooming into that area. It's helpful to be able to pan, if you're zoomed in a lot, to slide the whole model over. And that's accomplished by holding the shift key down while you orbit, that is, while you drag your mouse wheel or drag your stylus across your tablet. So really we have three main navigation tools. We have orbit, zoom, and pan. You should practice using these tools until it really becomes second nature and you don't have to think about it. There are actually explicit tools available in the large tool set for these operations, but I never use them because I just rely on the functionality of my input device to accomplish this. If you use these tools, then you have to actually hold down the left mouse button or drag the stylus on the tablet to orbit, pan, or zoom. Most of the time when you're working in SketchUp, you'll want to stay in perspective mode because this is how our eyes see. Things that are further away from us appear to diminish in size. Parallel projection is necessary for creating plans, elevations, and sections. And in parallel projection, objects retain their actual size in the distance. You can switch into this mode from the camera menu. Or if you're using my keyboard shortcuts, you can press J to toggle between parallel and perspective. Let's say I want to create an elevation. I'll switch into parallel projection and orbit around. It would be pretty tricky to get this perfect as an elevation just by eyeballing it by orbiting. Let's try using one of the preset views. We'll go up to the camera menu and choose standard views front and we have kind of a strange look here because this particular building is not oriented square to the axes. The site is askew with respect to the red and green axes. So the front view isn't really the kind of elevation that I want. Instead, what I can do is click on a surface that's within that elevation plane. Right click and then choose Align View. Now I'm looking dead on in an elevation. I can then pan over and zoom in to create an elevation. I can press J to create a perspective elevation. Two-point perspective is also available, and this is most useful for tall buildings or when you're looking up at a structure. I'll orbit around, so I'm looking up at this residence. This can make for a more imposing or impressive view of a structure. Zoom in a little bit more. And if you look closely, you'll see that this wall seems to have a stair-stepping pattern on it, which is occurring because the wall is angling inward slightly. Now this effect is very subtle here because we're just dealing with this residence. If this was a high-rise building, the effect would be very pronounced. We can correct this by switching into two-point perspective mode. It automatically makes all of the verticals completely vertical and it says two-point perspective up here in the corner. You can pan the perspective around simply by dragging to compose a more pleasing view, and you can also zoom in and out. 
If you try to orbit, you're going to switch back into three-point perspective automatically, and this identifier disappears. There are many ways to zoom in SketchUp. The most obvious is to roll the wheel of the mouse or drag your finger along the touch strip of your tablet. Another method is to press the Z key to activate the zoom tool. Drag up to zoom in or down to zoom out. Dragging side to side doesn't do anything. I don't tend to use the zoom tool because I prefer to zoom using my input device. But the zoom tool has a convenient shortcut to field of view down here in the measurements toolbar. Let's change the field of view not by typing in this box, but rather just by starting to type on the keyboard. I'll type in 55 DEG and press return. That changes the field of view that I'm looking through. It's like changing the virtual camera lens that you're using. We started out with a narrower field of view and we increased it so now we have more of a wide angle shot. I'll zoom in just using the regular zoom tool and orbit we have a more dramatic view of the house because of the wide-angle lens that we're looking through. There's actually an explicit tool for changing the field of view right here under Zoom on the camera menu. I'll drag up to decrease the field of view, making it more of a telephoto shot. Everything tends to flatten out. If I drag down, I'm making a more wide-angle shot, and everything starts to get really distorted. This isn't the way to zoom into something to work on it. Field of view is more of a compositional technique. I'm going to set it back to 35 DEG and then press return. Then I'll use the zoom tool to zoom out. Another useful zoom tool is called zoom window and you can activate it using option Z with my shortcuts. The cursor changes to this symbol indicating that you can drag out a window. This is nice because you can get right to the place where you want to work without having to navigate there. I saved myself having to pan and zoom a few times to get right up close and personal with this window. Now let's say that I want to go back to where I was before. You don't want to use undo for that because undo takes away the last geometry change that you made. It doesn't affect what you've done with the camera. Instead what you want to do is press Control Z to go zoom previous. Okay, now I'm a bit indecisive. Maybe I do want to go back to that window. Instead of doing zoom window again, I can press Control shift z to zoom next. Zoom previous and zoom next don't just record zoom changes. They record all changes that you make to the camera. Let's say I go over here, orbit, pan, zoom in some more, and then I want to go back. I'll press Control z a few times to go back. Or maybe I want to go forward. I can press Control shift z to return through those list of changes that I've made to the camera. To get an overview of the entire model, use Zoom Extents, which is shift z with my shortcuts. If you want to work in detail on a specific object, right-click on it and choose Zoom Extents from the context menu. This actually does something different. It zooms you into the extents of the selection. Now I can orbit and work on this particular object. There's a Ruby script which combines the functionality of Zoom Extents on the context menu, which is actually Zoom Extents selection, with the Zoom Extents that you find on the camera menu, which is actually Zoom Extents out to the whole model. I like this Ruby script because I don't have to think about it once it's installed. I can just use it and it will take me either to the extents of the model or into a selection when I call for it. Let's take a look at it in the finder. It's called zoom underscore selection dot rb and it's written by Jim Fultz. You can Google his name and find it. It adds two items to the camera menu, zoom selection and zoom out. Let's see how it works. I have this edge selected. I'll choose camera, zoom selection, and I zoom right into it. If I deselect by clicking off to the side and I use the same command, it will do a zoom extents. So it chooses for me, depending on what's selected or not selected. I'd like to use this all the time, so I'll go up to Preferences and filter the commands for Zoom. You can see right here that Shift-Z is currently Zoom Extents. I want to change that to this new command added by Jim Foltz's script to Shift-Z. When I do that, there's a name collision, so I have to choose to replace the existing shortcut. 
So now Shift Z is actually zoom selection. We get zoom out just kind of as a bonus. Zoom out just takes you out a bit. I'll do Shift Z to zoom extents. Then I'll click on something and do Shift Z again, and now I can work on it. SketchUp has a set of camera tools which make navigating SketchUp like playing a video game. It turns out these tools are extremely useful in moving around architectural spaces. SketchUp has three tools which are part of this, what I'm calling, video game system. Position camera, walk, and look around. It all starts by positioning the camera. Since C is used for circle, my shortcuts have option C as the shortcut for position camera. Notice the cursor changes to this symbol which represents where you're standing looking through the camera. Don't just click. You need to click and drag to indicate not only where you're standing but where you're looking. When you release the button, you're taken there. Now my eye height is set at around 9 inches above the ground. I need to change that by typing in a value. I'll type in 5 foot 10 and I automatically move up. Now we can get a sense of what it's like to actually be there. It might be useful to change the field of view to a slightly more wide angle view so we can see more of the architecture. I'll press Z, 55, DEG, return. Now I want to move around so I'll use the walk tool by pressing W. The cursor changes to these footprints. I'll drag forward to walk. If I drag to the side, I'm turning. And I can move around the space by dragging to the side, dragging forward to move forward, and so on. It takes a little getting used to, but it's fairly intuitive. You can also move vertically or sideways by holding down the shift key. This is like panning. Be aware that when you do this, you are changing your eye height. I can move up on a scaffold here. You can always set your eye height to a specific value by typing in a number and pressing return. Right click to use look around. The cursor changes to these eyes. Now instead of moving my feet, I'm moving my neck. And I'm looking around at the building, looking up at it, and so on. I'll right click and switch back into walk mode. I can run by holding down the option key if I want to cover a lot of ground. It goes fast. But notice that I'm kind of trapped in here now. That's because of collision detection. SketchUp knows that I've just run into this low height wall that's behind me and it won't let me back up anymore. I can hold down the command key to disable collision detection and then I'll be able to move through a wall. You can also get into buildings that way, like a ghost. You can walk right through the wall. Now this particular model doesn't have an interior, so that might not be desirable. As you can see, first-person navigation is an exciting and compelling way to visualize a space. There are many ways to see inside a model. This residence has an interior. We can see it by pressing the X key to toggle X-ray mode. And now we can see through it. I can see plumbing fixtures on the second floor and appliances down here in the kitchen on the ground floor. I couldn't really add a bed to the second floor here because the roof is in the way. So one approach might be to hide the roof while I'm working on the second floor. Another approach might be to cut the model into pieces and put the pieces on different layers so I could turn off the second floor and the roof to access the first floor. Another method is to actually go into the space that you're working on using the video game controls. Let's try that next. I'll press X again to toggle back into the regular mode and I'll press Option C to open the position camera tool. I'll position the camera right here and drag towards the back door. Set the eye height at 6 feet and right click to enter the walk tool. Hold down the command key to walk right through the door. Things are a bit cramped. Let's increase the field of view. Press Z and type 55 degrees. Return. Go back to the walk tool by pressing W. And let's go on a little tour. 
I'll drag to the left to turn left. You always want to start walking right from this crosshair in the middle of the screen. Start dragging up to walk. It's helpful in confined spaces to slide left and right by holding down the shift key. You just have to be careful not to drag at a diagonal or you'll be changing your eye height. You can also use look around to look up or down. Say I get over here and I want to look down. I can use look around and then drag downward. Aside from this room by room approach, there's a more global method of seeing inside a building. I'll go zoom extents and I'll shift the field of view back to 35 degrees. Zoom extents again. Access the section tool by pressing option S. As I move the cursor over various surfaces, the section plane automatically orients itself. I'll take a section going this way. Click on the wall and the section plane is added. Press M to use the Move tool. Move the section in and you'll slice through the building anywhere you like. I'll click again to stop moving. Double click on one of these arrows to turn the section plane off. Double click again to activate it. Right click and choose Reverse if you want the opposite side. You can also control the color of the section cut line and whether or not this plane is displayed in the style. Go to Window, Styles, Edit your current style, go to this last mode which has modeling settings. Here you can control the color of your section cut line, its thickness, or whether you want to have it at all. I think I'll turn this down to 1 and make it black again so it's unobtrusive. I'll turn off the section plane display and now we can work on this model. If I want to move the section plane I have to toggle the display of the plane back on, go to the move tool and move the plane over. Then I can toggle this back off and work on this room. A plan view is technically a section cut. I'm going to toggle the section planes back on and create a new section plane by pressing Option S. This time I'll just click on the ground to create a plan cut. I'll use the Move tool to move this up. I'll stop just shy of the ceiling to create this first floor plan. I'll turn off the section planes. And now I can very easily work on the first floor. I have access to all of its rooms. You can use scenes to record multiple sections and it's a quick way to call them up when you're working. I'm going to orbit over here and position this building so that it's centered on the screen. Then I'll open up the scenes dialog and create a new scene by clicking the plus button. A button appears up here at the top of the screen called scene 1. I'll toggle the section planes back on temporarily. And then I'll select this top section here that's cutting through the building vertically. Right click and choose Active Cut so that it's on. Then I'll toggle the section planes off and I'll orbit, zoom in and position the view just so. I'll save an additional scene. Let me close Styles and Scenes. Now we can easily toggle between the two section cuts. Just press Scene 1 to go to the plan view or scene 2 to go to the section.